much help. Hey, Sean, it's Dean Miller. How you doing? Dean, what's up, buddy? How was your trip? It was very good. It was long, but it was a great. We had a great time. It was good to get away and kind of reconnect with the family a little bit, which is always nice. Awesome. But yeah, uh, I didn't uh, pretty much set on my end. Okay. Good. And then in, in the meantime, start mapping out what you want me to do as far as start any kind of filings that you want to get get, get going. And before I file, it's pretty simple. Um, I have my stuff pretty set. It's on your end. It's really just going to that special use here and getting it reapproved. And then as far as the filings, when I spoke to everybody, um, to probably make it simple is. If this is okay with you, I think you get a few thousand dollars left with your architect. We would probably just hire them, and then if you just told them, "Hey, let these guys use that credit," then we we'll rock the roll. That way, you don't have to do much. Yeah, I gotta, hire I gotta, office. I gotta check on what the what the balance is with them. But um, you know, okay. we we vetted a bunch of different companies. They were not the cheapest, but they definitely were the best and the most thorough. Uh, which you, in the, I, I don't, my guys don't care about the cheapest. Yeah. We want the best and have it done. You know, yeah. you, you, you just if you save money now, you're gonna spend it longer. Hey, yeah. Couldn't agree with you more. So you know, Lizardos is the and, company uh, that we Lizardos. You, know, you get what you pay for with somebody. Yeah. Else. Lizardos is the company we hired. I spoke to the owner of the company a couple weeks ago. He says we'd love the opportunity to do the business. They love the location. They used to be customers at the place all the time. So, you know, you'll make your money back off of that company alone just in business when you hire them, which is a good thing. We'll talk within the next 24 hours. All right, thanks, Pete. Appreciate it. I appreciate it, Sean. Have a great day. No problem, too. Well, that's a good way to start the day. I got a building in Mineola that I bought a little over two years ago with all intentions of putting my second restaurant in. And a couple months after uh, we bought it, we decided against the project. So I've been sitting on the building for about a year and a half. I did some basic work to it. But I found what I think is not only the perfect buyer for me financially, but the perfect buyer for the town. Uh, who's going to put in something very similar to what I was looking to do in in uh, the sense of it's a very much a community related uh, bar restaurant kind of place uh, that caters to all the local businesses over in Mineola and all that other kind of good stuff so if all goes well we'll have a deal in theory by next week and a contract a couple days after that and hopefully have the building sold within the next three to six months so that's a good start we are now um, looking for Core Medical, which is located somewhere around here in uh, the world famous Bev Francis Powerhouse Gym. Uh, we're gonna go meet Eric Coleman, former New York Jet, and he's now involved in this Core Medical group, and he's got some charitable, th philanthropic things that he's doing. And we're gonna start off our kinda If You Lived Here series that I've been talking about for a while, where we focus on small businesses. We're gonna go have an interview with Eric, learn a little bit about what they do, and see uh, if we can make some kind of magic and help him build his business while expanding our audience as well. I'm here with Eric Coleman, former New York Jet and a member of the Core Medical Group of New York. We're here in Syosset, New York in the Bev Francis Powerhouse Gym to talk, talk to Eric about his business, what they do, how they could benefit people, why you should know who they are. Eric, thanks so much for doing this with oh, me. It's man, great to see you again. By. Thanks for coming it's to see long us. Time, long time friend, our, our good old friend Rich Salgado, Big Daddy, introduced yeah. us a couple years back at another charitable event. And uh, I'm glad we got to reconnect. Yeah, good people. You hang around with good people, good things happen. Mm -hmm. So, Eric, tell me a little bit about what Core Medical is. So, Core Medical is, um, is a hormone replacement therapy clinic. We focus on life optimization. So, uh, you know, we, we, each patient comes in. We do an extensive blood panel on them. Uh, figure out what's going on. You know, how can we help your energy, your sex drive, uh, you know, your recovery. Um, 
all those things that we, we take care of here at Core Medical, from hormone replacement, uh, testosterone therapy, erectile dysfunction, we do vitamin IVs, uh, vitamin injections, we do, we, you name it, we do it. And it's uh, all about making you feel better. Get those hours at the end of your day, uh, make you feel revitalized. And just because you age, just because your number goes up in age, doesn't mean you have to feel that way. So we try to keep everybody feeling great. Okay, and when you say everybody, tell me who you're, you know, we talk about small business all the time. Mm -hmm. Who's your target audience? Who's your core audience? My core audience is, is probably, you know, men and women, ages 35 all the way up to 80. You know, okay. that, that's our typical audience. You know, a lot of men, uh, you know, down at our Florida locations, it's more even. You know, a lot of women come in. But we found in New York, a lot of men in their 30s, 40s, 50s, they want to come in and get that extra boost. You know, okay. your testosterone drops as you get older. Uh, we, we try to equal that out, you know, and make sure that, you know, you can recover right, your sex drive is healthy. When you work out, you, you lose those pounds, you lose the, the weight around your waist, uh, and you feel good about yourself. Okay, nice. So how do, how have, how long have you guys been doing this? So um, Core Medical, we've been around about 10 years. Okay. Uh, down in Delray Beach, Florida is where our headquarters is. Okay. Uh, we also have locations in Boca Raton, um, up in Tampa. We've been in Long Island for five years now. Nice. Uh, and we're up in Boston as well, two locations up in Boston. So uh, we were in Woodbury for four years. Right, I remember we recently that. just moved into Bev Francis uh, Powerhouse, and, uh, and Steve Weinberger and Bev have been amazing to us. You know, cool. it's, it's, they're great people. Uh, we love the location. Uh, it seems like it, it seems like it makes a lot of sense to have the two businesses kind of working close by. It does. You, yeah. know, you know, we want people who care about the way they, they look, the way, the way they feel. They want to invest in eating right, working out. Um, so that's what it takes. You know, we're kind of like that third piece of the pie. Right. You know, you have your, your, your food, your, your workout, your exercise, and you have to make sure that uh, your hormones are, are in the right level. So that's what we like to do here. Um, it, it's been great. It's been great working with people, making people feel better, seeing the change, helping people lose weight, helping people feel better about themselves. It's, it's a blessing. What's the future hold for the company? Uh, the future? Well, I, I think that you know we try to service as many people as we can. You know, so you know, obviously, once we grow this location, you know, we're already talking about opening new facilities on Long Island. So you might see us in Jericho, uh, maybe. Um, Southampton. We want to service more people, as many people as we can, help them live lives. Um, testosterone therapy sometimes has a stigma because right. of the, the abuse of testosterone. Yep. But, you know, our doctors, you know, make sure that you're dialed into the right level. Uh, we want to make sure that, that everyone's hormone level is at the optimal level. We don't want to abuse it. We want to make sure that, that everyone's getting the right treatment. How did the, how did the working relationship between you and the managers and the doctors, how did that all develop? So that's a great question. So uh, <coughs> when I was playing in the NFL, uh, I, I spent my off seasons down in North Miami training okay. uh, with a guy named Pete Bomarito. Um, he trains a bunch of professional football players. You know, there were guys from every team would come down to Florida and we would all train together. You know, the season's long, my body feels broken down yeah. at the end of the year. And a lot of them told me it's all about your nutrition. It's all about what you put in your body. And they gave me the number to Core Medical in Delray Beach. Uh, I, I went there, got some IVs made, some recovery IVs, some, some energy IVs, some different supplements, and I felt fantastic. You know, I was getting older in age uh, in my NFL career, but I felt like a young, a young player again. It just makes me laugh every time I look. I know I got you by a couple of years, and I hear, guy, I hear guys like you always talk about getting older in age, yeah. and I'm like, hey, you make me feel real old real well, quick. <laughs> well, I mean, but, I, but I get it. The you NFL know. is a young man's yeah. sport. You know, it's, it's Football a young old game. is a lot different. Yeah, so once I hit 30, I was an old man in the yeah. room. And so it really made me feel better. I asked a lot of questions, and I, I gained a relationship with the, with the founder and president, uh, Sidney Gordon. Okay. Uh, we became friends, you know, through just asking questions. We would go out to dinner, and I would always be down there training. And at the end of my career, I said, you know, Sydney, you know, I'm about to retire. And he said, why don't we open up a core up in New York, and you run it. And, you know, everyone always talks about transitioning out of the game. Right. And here is a blessing. It was a blessing for me to be able to transition out of football and go right into business. Uh, as a football player, you used to being catered to. Yep. You know, guy, everyone wants something from you. But when you flip it around and now you're a business person, I have to call you for your business. I have to cold call, you know, come spend money with me or come work with me. It changes yeah. and it humbles you, you know, because you get hung up on, you get doors yep. slammed in your face. And, uh, you know, it really gave me a respect about business, about success outside of football 
that I didn't have before. It's funny because going back years, you know, I, I did some work with the David Cohn Foundation years ago and with Derek Jeter's Turn 2 Foundation, kind of from the outside, not necessarily on the inside, but with some of the outsiders. And, and it's one of the common things I always hear from, from athletes is that, you know, you go in and most of them all too often don't understand your, your lifespan, that window of opportunity to make all that money that everybody thinks makes you the richest and wealthiest guy in the mm -hmm. world is literally that long sometimes. Yeah. And you, a blink of an eye and it's gone. Exactly. Yeah. And so guys, you know, they, they, they don't pursue things for post football. They don't pursue things for after they're done playing because they want to focus on this. Yep. But while you're doing football, there's time to invest yourself in other things. And, and I think that's important for the young yeah. players uh, to, to learn about different businesses, do mentorships, mm -hmm. uh, internships, you know, learn about other businesses. And uh, those are the kind of things that yeah. I did when I played. Yeah, good for you. And it shows, you know, it, it looks like you're doing well. And from the few conversations we've had, I'm happy to see you successful with Thank it. You. So. Thank you. All right, let's talk about one of the most important things to me, philanthropy and charity. Mm -hmm. You made a change in your professional career, not to, or you announced some type of change you were making not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Tell me what those changes were, why you did them, and why these causes are important to you, and what your goals are, and what you're looking to do to bring change to those worlds. Well, you know, I was working as director of chapter relations for the NFL Alumni Association, and that's a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. that helps former players and their families. And, you know, what I found in doing that is I have this thing in my heart for helping people and I want to help as many people as possible. And I had the opportunity to uh, be a part of Guardian Recovery Network through my business relationships. And drug addiction, uh, drug rehabilitation is something that's near and dear to my heart. Okay. You know, I, I grew up in a, in a family where drug abuse was uh, prevalent and uh, in a neighborhood that was drug abuse was prevalent. And I want to help as many people as possible. And I got the opportunity to come in with Guardian Recovery Network and, and help more people, help try to change people's views on addiction, help people who are suffering from addiction to get them help. And, and, and I really love using that platform as a former player to promote that. Yeah. You know, also, you know, there's a lot of kids like me who grew up, who, who are growing up right now that have parents that, that have drug addiction issues and that think that there's no light at the end of the tunnel. When I go talk to those kids, I show them, listen, I went through the same thing that you went through. There, I have those choices. I could have went that direction, but you have to stay strong. You have to fight for what's right and, and, and fight the urge to follow that trend. And uh, sometimes I, I feel like I can be a beacon of hope for some of those kids. And, uh, and, and you know, I always say, if you can help one, then, then you're doing your job. Yeah. So yep. that's what I like to do. Uh, focus on the recovery rehabilitation part about helping people change their lives for the better. That's great. That's great. Listen, I appreciate your time. It's always a pleasure. Thank Tell you. people how they can find out more about CORE, more about Guardian, whatever okay. it is that you're doing. CoreMedicalGRP.com, GuardianRecoveryNetwork.com as well. Find us on social media. You can always go to my Instagram page, um, at Eric Coleman, and uh, I can get you whatever you need. Good deal. Eric, thanks again for your time. I appreciate it. Thank so you, dude. Look up, Eric. Make some connections. Help people out. There's nothing like being around great people. Good people always make you great. Great people make you exceptional. Keep working hard. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Thank my you. man. A guy like Eric played nine years. You see him there. He's still vertical. He doesn't seem to be broken like so many others are. Uh, and he's thriving with business. And he's thriving with opportunities to help do better things for other people with the uh, you know, in the, in the substance abuse world. So, you know, it's nice to be around good people and a guy who's, who's intelligent, but smart, at the same time smart enough to know that he still has so much life ahead of him and so many more opportunities to grow personally, professionally, philanthropically. That kind of stuff makes, makes me happy, which is why I was, you know, the guy who introduced um, Eric and I, I go back to my high school days with him. He was he played ball in New High Park, where my family was from, uh, and I went to a summer camp. And he was a little bit older than me. He actually was Neil O'Donnell, the former Pittsburgh Steeler and later New York Jet, and bounced around a couple other places. Um, Rich and Neil were roommates. Neil was the quarterback, and Rich was his weak side tackle. So he was literally the guy that would protect his ass. Um, and I've kept in touch with Rich and his, his younger brother, Lewis, is a dear friend of mine. And Lewis has been on some videos with us before, and I'm hoping to get more contact and more context with Lewis as well in the future. But it's nice building those relationships and being around these guys, and it's inspirational to me 
as a guy who still keeps saying I'm way overweight, you walk through that gym and as intimidating as it is, it also makes you realize you got to do something. Life is a little too precious to take advantage of and beat yourself up. You got to beat yourself up the right way sometimes. In this world we live in, so many people don't see the opportunity to take advantage of running your, your business and sometimes your life as a media company. And I think that's a big reason why I look at the, the new opportunities with Dean Miller Real Estate to say, what are we? Well, clearly we're a small business. I want to treat so much of it as a media company because there's opportunities to expand our message and our audience and get our word out there about what we're looking to do. And, you know, some people will look at it and just say, um, you know, you're just a real estate company, you help sell houses. But I look at it so much differently and say, no, we're, we're an organization that creates our revenue based off of real estate transactions. But our role is to 100% get out there and make a difference in the lives of other people. Uh, and that's part of our mission of, of helping 10,000 families in 10 years. And part of our mission, part of that mission being not just to sell 10,000 homes, but to literally help 10,000 families with their needs, whether that be a, home, a local homeless person here, uh, one that's near and dear to my heart, a military, you know, someone from, from the military, a veteran who's fallen on hard times. Um, and I started watching this show, Military Makeover, which has been on for years, and an old high school buddy of mine is actually one of the hosts with Montel Williams. And I was watching an episode a couple weeks ago, I believe it was in St. Louis, uh, in, in Missouri uh, about this organization building tiny homes for, for veterans to get them, help them at least get off the street and get back on their feet temporarily. And these guys were living in what amounted to a really, really, really small studio apartment. It was a box with, the, with some plumbing in it and electric. But these guys had a bed and a shower and a place to cook a meal. Uh, and you watch how so many of these people who had struggled have moved up in the world to become not only productive members of society, not to say that they weren't previously, but now they've got the opportunity to help provide for other people. So you know, those are the things that, that drive me to, uh, you know, to work hard to help a lot of families move into and out of their homes here on Long Island, but to take a good percentage of the money that we make in that process to contribute to causes. Good. So I got I got some updates from Maria about uh, what's going on. Give me your okay. give me your two cents on where we stand with everything and what you want to do because she's heading out of and town Wednesday. So I'm back. Okay. Right. Um, this is the situation. My wife has W two. My W two hasn't reached yet. I don't have any taxes. I haven't been in this country yep. long enough. Um, I don't, I think I can only come up with like an annual report from like 2015. Right, you don't have, you don't have an income history here in the States long enough to make them happy. Uh, yeah. And the fact that you're in a completely different industry now, so we're going to have to do a little salesmanship on that part of it. But here's where, here's where we stand. You look at it from the landlord's point of view. They want all of this to make sure that you're a good credit, you're a good risk for them. They don't, want to, yeah. they don't want to rent the place to you, then have you go broke and disappear, because New York is a very tough state when it comes to landlords and all of that kind of stuff. You know, we got to sell you guys to the landlord to say, hey, we're good people, we're going to be valued tenants, we're going to take good care of the place, we're going to make sure you're paid on time or early every month. Yeah. Uh, and and to, the, to the point where 
even if you could come up with, and you know, I'm not trying to spend someone else's money, but maybe if the opportunity is there to say, hey, we'll even put an extra month's worth of, of security into the place or prepay the last two months of rent kind of thing, uh, as opposed to the last month's worth of rent in addition. So you may, you know, if it helps to come up with an extra month's rent to throw out there, eventually, yeah. eventually you're not going to get it back, but eventually you won't have to spend it. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So, and, and I'm open to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this is um, where, and this is where, you, I, go ahead, if you, go ahead. If, if you know him or if you have credit, but you could tell him, look, I know this guy, you know, he has business in the Caribbean. Yep. I've known him for a long time. And that's what I'm going to want to, that's what I'm going to want to do is, is if this is the place that you want, I want to sit down with you and your wife and say, okay, let's sit down and write the story that, that I'm going to go pitch to the listing agent and the, and the landlord and say, if this That's is what you want, we're going to create, we're going to create a true version of the story, but we're going to, yeah. we're going to make it so that they're comfortable with this saying, Hey, you know what? Sometimes when you deal with landlords, they're just good people who don't want to get screwed. So let's yeah. put a story together that says, Hey, we're good people. We can't prove the financial history yet because of the change but you're a small business owner, you've worked hard, you had success, mother nature kicked you in the ass, and that's the reason why you decided to go this route. Um, right. And as a result, you've taken jobs where you're doing consulting work and you're doing, you've got websites that are making you money and you dove into the New York life thing. And you know, right. with the, so I, I think we can package it and sell it. Thank you. You got it. Okay. I got to run, I will talk to you later. All right, buddy, take Thanks. care, bye-bye. See, sometimes you just got to get creative. It's not about the black and white of how to solve the problem. It's how to get a little bit creative uh, to make things happen. Good people, good things should happen.